uh, this exciting work we're doing at the uh, LHC. So here's my uh, opening slide. And actually, I'm going to talk about a lot of things that Mike just said. In fact, I'm going to make connections between the work that we do at the LHC and the universe. And in fact, I will talk about the cosmic microwave background because there are analogies between the way that we look back in the early universe and see what's going on to actually what we do when we study nuclear collisions. So that's essentially the left-hand side. This is a uh, very nice, uh, slick uh, picture of kind of the time history of the universe. So you'll see me talk about that a little bit. And then this is an event display, not a picture, but a computer representation of one nucleus-nucleus collision event recorded uh, at the Large Hadron Collider actually last November. Um, so I will talk quite a bit more about this. Now, actually, I could retitle um, my talk, Recreating the Big Bang in the Laboratory, except actually we create really little bangs uh, because they're small and they don't last very long. But as I will argue to you, in fact, a lot of the features that we see have direct analogy with uh, the way the evolution of the universe worked. And that um, those analogies have gone from being just physics analogies to the point where, in fact, a lot of the tools that we're using to study the early evolution of the universe and to study the early stages and evolution of these nucleus-nucleus nucleus collisions are, in a sense, the same or quite similar. So maybe to set the context, um, in fact, this is work that I started many years ago now. 60 miles east of us, there is a machine at Brookhaven National Laboratory, Laboratory on Long Island, exit 68 on the LIE, for all of those of you who have driven out there. Uh, it looks like this from the air. Uh, it's actually a complex of accelerators, uh, the last of which is a collider that can accelerate and collide beams of uh, nuclei, protons, um, we've done uh, deuterium, we've done uh, helium, all the way up to uranium. Uh, and it recreates the conditions that existed in the early universe about 10 millionths of a second uh, after the Big Bang. Not only it does that, in fact, by colliding nuclei as large as gold and uranium, which are some of the largest in size and also in terms of uh, atomic mass uh, that exist in our universe. And it does that 100,000 times a second. Okay, now that's actually quite often, but it's uh, peanuts compared to what we do at the LHC, but still, um, we do this 100,000 times a second at Rick. But the system that it creates lasts 10 to the minus 24 seconds. So that's a millionth of a billionth of a billionth of a second. So that's a really short period of time. And the Big Bang that we create is really kind of small. It's only about 10 to the minus 14 meters. So that's if you took a billionth of a meter, took a meter stick and divided it into a billion pieces, and then divided each of those into a million, and then you took 10 of those, that would be the size of the system we created. It's really small. Okay. Um, now, in fact, this same work is being done now at the Large Hadron Collider, where, as you know, the Higgs was discovered. And in fact, it turns out that the LHC, from its beginning, its program was designed to spend one month a year essentially recreating the conditions of the early universe by colliding nuclei, not at 100,000 times a second, but more like um, a million times a second. Actually, we're still peanuts compared to the PP collisions, which are uh, 40 million times a second, but still a million is pretty good. Um, and as I will be telling you the rest of my talk is um, about why we do this and uh, what we're learning from it. Okay, um, this is a uh, animation of what a acceleration of bunches and their ultimately ultimate collision looks like uh, at the LHC. So these are bunches that start in the accelerator called the PS. They get accelerated in the SPS. They get injected into the LHC. Bunches go around the ring, and pretty soon you'll start to see. Uh, uh, 
a vision of bunches flying down the LHC tunnel, going faster and faster. The red here means it's being accelerated, right? Um, so here's one bunch going one way, and then there's a bunch coming from the other direction. Um, and here's the experiment where they're going to collide. And for those of you who've seen this before, it's going to look different, right? Now, because these collisions of nuclei produce as much as, as many as 50,000 particles, right? So a typical proton-proton collision produces like 50 particles, right? But these nuclear collisions produce more like 50,000 particles. In fact, there's particles everywhere. Um, one of the things that the, our detector here, Atlas, says is measure energy in something called calorimeters. I'll say more about that later. There's energy everywhere in the calorimeters. And one of the funny things about this is that high energy physicists look at what we do and they go, oh God, why would you do that, right? Um, because it's even the proton-proton collisions are actually really hard to understand because there's so much going on in events that produce the Higgs that you actually have to try to dig the Higgs out of a lot of background, right? Well, we're taking the background and we're making it basically 500 times bigger, right? And you may say, well, why would you do such a thing? Well, the thing is we're trying to do different physics, okay? So, um, my talk will be telling you a story of the very large, the universe, it's pretty large, um, and the very small, so the very small.